Adam Goods is a former Australian rules footballer. He won two Brownlow medals and two AFL premierships. He is the one of the best to ever play the game and by all measures should have retired a popular and decorated champion. However, rather than go quietly into the night and leave on good terms, Mr. Goods did what far too many people have done in the modern world. He decided to become a pro-establishment activist. He wanted to fight against something that he'd been told was a real problem in Australia. Something the media and the ruling parasites are constantly telling us we all have to stand against. Like so many brainwashed NPCs, he wanted to take a stand against the supposed problem of racism in Australia. He did ads, made speeches, and all the usual things you'd associate with a brainless NPC taking a stand against a fake problem made up by the anti-white establishment for the sole purpose of dividing us against each other and silencing those of European ancestry. In the middle of a game, a 13-year-old girl called him an ape from the stands in order to describe his hairy appearance, and because he's a snowflake, he pointed at her and got her kicked out and humiliated on national television. He claimed it was somehow Ray Ray to describe a person accurately. All human beings are apes, after all. Some of us more ape-like than others. Soon after this, the PC thuggery of the establishment kicked into gear and decided it was a wise idea to name him Australian of the Year. Goods then used this platform to tell Australians that this country somehow doesn't belong to Australians. He told us to accept the premise that it's okay to call Australia Day Invasion Day and to generally lecture Australians on being evil bad Ray Rays. He even said the Australian constitution is racist because it fails to mention a group of people who happened to occupy the continent before Anglo-Brits created the great country known as Australia. Keep in mind, the Australian of the Year award, according to its own website, is supposed to be awarded to citizens who, quote, inspire us through their achievements and challenge us to make our own contribution to create a better Australia, end quote. How insulting Australians by calling us all Ray Rays is supposed to inspire us or create a better Australia is anyone's guess. Whatever the logic behind his actions, the result is now famous. Adam Goods got booed, then he got booed again, and then he was booed some more. The anti-white establishment demanded Australians stop booing, so being Australian, we all booed even louder and refused to stop until he retired. Then, he refused to take part in the traditional grand final parade of retiring players, knowing he'd get booed again. Four years later, the anti-white establishment are once again attempting to gaslight us into submission with a new documentary called The Final Quarter. Not only are they claiming it's proof of Adam's victimhood, when it's not, but they are desperately claiming it's changed the minds of oh so many people who are now oh so remorseful for what they did. Someone should tell them to read the comment sections on any website that isn't totally biased towards anti-white communism. They'd soon realise that not only are Australians not sorry, but we are even more determined than ever to let our voice be heard. Just a quick message, whether it's an algorithm hiding content or outright deletion, internet censorship is on the rise. Please consider following me on free speech websites Gab, Minds and BitChute. I'm constantly posting content and they are a great way to stay notified of uploads. Can't wait to see you there. The Final Quarter is a documentary style film. It takes various media pieces and articles that cover the last three years of Adam Goode's career. It is essentially a running commentary of the entire saga, playing comments from various media personalities, Adam Goods himself, his family and former players. Music in the background is chosen to elicit specific emotional responses. Whenever Goods or one of his supporters is speaking, it's uplifting or emotional. 
Then, whenever they produce one of his detractors' comments, the music suddenly changes to a darker, more ominous tone. The fake news media just love this simple propaganda technique, and it's often quite effective. The overwhelming majority of comments and opinions come from people defending goods and calling those who booed Ray Rays. There was some dissent, but these were always set up as somehow laughable or used as a means to show who the bad guys really are. No new information was added, and it's unlikely anyone changed their mind in any serious way. They even let everyone hear Sam Newman's opinion, but they made sure that you knew that someone in the crowd called him a racist. Just make sure you ignore the reaction from the vast majority of people in the audience. Uh, contrary to opinion, people are not booing you, Adam, because you're an Aboriginal. They're booing you because you're acting like a jerk. And the eight... Just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, it is on you as an Australian of the year to unite and placate people, not to divide and be a provocateur. Now, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Now, just a minute. Stop. If you, and, and this man said I'm a racist. So we then get to St Kilda, who are thinking of having a gay pride game. This is just using the competition again as some political agenda. Why don't we have a Boat People Day next week? <laughs> or what about we have a transgender round and we'll get Caitlyn Jenner to sing at the grand final? <laughs> I am waiting. I am waiting. I am a white, I am a white Anglo-Saxon male Protestant heterosexual. I'm waiting for my day to come. And Sam Newman is correct in his assessment, and it's not hard to see why the footy show silenced him and thus destroyed itself soon after. Adam Goods got booed because of his own actions. There's more to it, but that's it in a nutshell. Did you notice how focused they were on the one man in the audience who called him a Ray Ray? This is the perfect illustration of the current clown world paradigm. You see, the audience actually cheered for Newman. The audience, aka the people, indicated that they in fact share his views. One lone individual then cries Ray Ray and it's given special significance. The media play this game all the time. They focus on a very small but loud minority while ignoring the fact that their views are strongly opposed by the vast majority of people. The idea is to give you, the viewer, the impression that so-called racism is bad and that only bad people will ever have views the establishment consider Ray Ray. Which brings us to an important point. Throughout the documentary, there are a number of definitions offered to help the audience understand the terms used, including a strange definition of racism that is, quote, a person whose words or actions display prejudice or discrimination on the grounds of race. Ignoring the fact that the term racism is nothing more than a tool to silence people of European ancestry and is an anti-white racial slur, this is a strange definition because the word discriminate literally means to choose. Therefore, given that everyone on the planet has a natural preference for their own ethnic or racial group, the documentary's own definition means everyone on the planet is a Ray Ray. Not only that, but throughout the documentary, there are repeated clips of Goods mentioning how proud he is of his Aboriginal heritage. What it predictably fails to focus on is the fact that he is also half Scottish. Goods is both proud of his Aboriginal heritage, but seemingly at the same time, indifferent to the fact that he has Scottish heritage. William Wallace and Robert the Bruce, ha, huh, they are nobodies apparently. This is clearly Adam Goods making a choice, or discriminating, based on his own race. Therefore, by the documentary's own definition, he is a Ray Ray racist against himself. Which brings us to one of the most important things to note throughout the piece of dishonest and manipulative propaganda. You see, 
the anti-white establishment were desperate to accuse those booing goods of doing so simply because he is Aboriginal, while ignoring his Scottish heritage as mentioned. That means the only reason they attacked the booers is that they are white. In other words, the establishment only care because white people booed a man who identifies as non-white. It doesn't take a high IQ to know what would happen if the races were reversed. If Goods were a proud white man standing up for his people, culture and heritage, and if those booing him were black, the anti-white establishment wouldn't just side with the booers. The anti-white establishment would have joined in the chorus, amplified their voice and hounded Goods out of public life in shame forever. It is important to point out when people get things right, however, even if the spin they put on the truth is utterly ludicrous. As editor of the XYZ David Hiscock stated, the booing of Adam Goods isn't Ray Ray, because that's just an anti-white racial slur as mentioned. But it does have everything to do with race. He states, and I quote, whether it is a referendum, native title, the national apology, or another referendum and change to the Australian constitution, Aussies are realizing that there is always something symbolic we have to do in order to atone for invented past sins, and we absolutely cannot move on until we have changed the law or said sorry for something. Yet, once this is done, there will always be something else we are made to feel guilty for. This is ultimately why we booed Adam Goods. It wasn't racist, but it had everything to do with race. White, Anglo-Celtic and European Australians are sick of being told we are evil, our country is evil, those who came before us are evil, and that we have to keep giving hand over fist to make up for it. This is why the rebuttals from the civic nationalist establishment are welcome but inadequate. We have to become immune to the charge of racism and relearn the so-called racist behavioural patterns we have been deliberately brainwashed to forget. If we are going to win, we must accept that the culture war is a racial holy war and act accordingly. End quote. This sentiment sums up the situation perfectly. Australians are fed up with the anti-white establishment telling us what we can and can't think, say, and do. They told us booing was Ray Ray, they demanded we stop, so we booed even louder and told them to shove off. They've been desperate to rewrite the narrative ever since, and this documentary is their attempt at doing just that. What the establishment didn't realise is that the entire world was waking up to their lies. This all started in 2013, after all, just three years before the Brexit vote and Donald Trump. You could argue that it was Australia's first taste of the nationalist populist uprising that's now unstoppably sweeping the world. This is the reason the ruling class parasites are so desperate to attack us and to silence us. They know their days are numbered and that they are in the fight of their lives. Which brings me to an action I rarely do. I have to admit that I was wrong. I booed Adam Goods for what I thought was his poor behaviour on and off the field. But while this was warranted, I should never have been angry with Adam Goods himself because ultimately it wasn't his fault. The real fault lies somewhere else. And the final quarter makes this abundantly clear. The real fault lies with the dishonest anti-white establishment who brainwashed Goods into thinking the country was Ray Ray, then encouraged his actions despite the public thoroughly rejecting him. They gave him the impression that racism was a big problem that needed fighting. Adam Goods' only mistake was taking their word for it. Then, when it all went wrong, rather than admit fault, the same anti-white establishment attacked the people, thus they made it much worse for Adam Goods. 
Whilst we should never apologize for booing because it was justified, we should also feel some sympathy for Adam Goods because he is just another victim of the anti-white establishment. He is nothing more than a pawn in their game, a useful idiot in their goal to eradicate all people of European heritage. It is clear that while being an extremely talented and hardworking athlete, he's not a particularly bright person and is clearly easily led. Adam Goods does indeed deserve an apology, but not from anyone who rightly booed him for insulting the Australian people and country. Adam Goods deserves an apology from the anti-white establishment including all members of the mainstream media who encouraged him. The AFL, who pushed the lame, we fight against very, very racism narrative, and anyone around him who failed to give him the truthful and harsh advice he needed. To the globalist anti-white establishment, Adam Goods is just a tool at their disposal. A weapon against white people wielded to further their goal of world domination. These people don't care one bit about Aboriginal rights and issues. All they care about is setting up a one world government and that means the destruction of all independent ethnicities, including Aborigines. They are the enemy, not low IQ footballers desperate for attention and a meaningful life outside the game they had dedicated themselves to. The only person who can win back the public is Adam Goods, and the only way he can do this is by recognizing the true agenda and calling it out. He could not only have ended the booing, but could have become a national hero if he'd simply understood the dynamic at play and apologized for his actions. If he'd stood up and said that it is indeed okay to be white, that it is indeed okay to be proud of your European ancestry, that it's okay for whites to express in-group preference, and that this wasn't racist because racist is just an anti-white racial slur, he'd be a true Australian hero. He'd instantly change from being a divisive and controversial figure to being a figure of unity and true reconciliation it would have the added benefit of throwing the media into a fit of confusion. They'd have no idea how to react, and that would be hilarious. Unfortunately, this is never going to happen, and Adam Goods will continue to remain a divisive figure in Australian culture. All while, Australians continue to wake up to the truth, and more of us are speaking out against the anti-white narrative that dominates our culture. The final quarter was little more than an attempted rewriting of history, a way to attack Australians and paint Adam Goods as the victim of racism, when really he's a victim of the same anti-white establishment that we all are. I hope you enjoyed the video, share the truth around, and I'll see ya when I see ya.